and we're back. Here I am, back in my basement studio. Yes, it's not really a studio. It's really just a projector projected on the wall in my basement. Uh, and my laptop is hooked up back there. So I'm trying to be an ethical speaker. That's what we covered in the last chapter. Now we're going to talk a bit about listening. Remember, I said we were going to talk about listening. Here we are. So what you need to know is that there's a difference between hearing and listening. So when you told your mom last night, I heard you, what you should have said is, I heard you, but I didn't listen to you, otherwise I might have done what you asked. So hearing is the vibration of sound waves on the eardrum. We hear a lot of things. Like right now, I have a clock in this room so I can hear it ticking. I have a son who's upstairs playing video games and watching YouTube. I can hear that, but I'm not really listening to it because I'm not paying close attention to what we hear. I am listening to things that I think are important to which I need to apply meaning. There are four types of listening. So when we, were, when we are actually listening, we have appreciative listening, empathic listening, comprehensive listening, and critical listening. Appreciative listening is listening for pleasure or for enjoyment. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. I like to listen to old school country music. So when I am listening to old school country music, I am listening for pleasure and enjoyment. I listen to it in my truck on Sirius XM. I have an app on my phone to a, music, a country music station that plays old country. It's kind of weird, I know, but it reminds me of my growing up years. Then there's empathic listening. That's listening to provide emotional support for the speaker. So this is like what I did for my friend when I was in college. He called me up at three o'clock in the morning and he said, hey, Heidi, uh, I want to talk about some stuff. Can we go and grab some breakfast and chat? And I was like, it's three o'clock in the morning. No, but of course, being the good friend that I am, I went anyway. So we went and I ate and he ate and I listened to him talk about his girlfriends and how he didn't know if he wanted to stay with his girlfriend. And so he was going to date another girl. And I was like, you got to break up with the first one before you go with the second one. So on and so forth. But I was listening to understand, to provide support, to really help him to make the decisions that he needed to make. I was not trying to solve his problems for him because I definitely could not decide which girl he should date. But... I was trying to help him make the right decision. Then there's comprehensive listening. Listening to clearly understand a message. Not to just empathize or sympathize with someone, but to actually listen for understanding. This is sometimes what we do in the classroom or what you might be doing right now. Listening to understand the message means that you're just trying to get as much as you can out of the materials. For this, it's for public speaking, but you also probably do a similar thing when you are listening in biology class, in geology class, in geometry class, in trigonometry, you name it, you are probably listening. Comprehensive listening, of course. This is when you take notes. The last type of listening is critical listening. Of course, this is according to The Art of Public Speaking, 13th edition by Dr. Stephen Lucas. But critical listening is listening to evaluate a message. In other words, this might be what you're doing when you're listening to a public speaker outside of the classroom. It might be what you're doing when you are listening to a politician to decide if that's the person you want to vote into government office or not. It might be listening to evaluate a message in a certain course, especially if the class has to do with something like debate or ethics, 
where you're going to be responsible for responding to the information provided by someone else. <laughs> How many of you, me included, would your significant others might and maybe say that you're not a good listener? That's okay. You're not the only one. Causes of poor listening. Sometimes we just don't concentrate. We're busy doing a million other things and we don't have time. Sometimes we're trying to listen too hard. Like in class when we woke up late and we're drinking our soda at, or coffee or whatever it is to get our caffeine in and we're just really, really, really trying to listen. Sometimes we don't get anything out of it. How about jumping to conclusions? Sometimes with elderly folks or with our professors, we try to determine what they're going to say next. So we just finish their sentences for them. We jump to conclusions because we think we know what they're going to say. We also focus on uh, delivery and appearance. So if the person says, uh, um, and you know, a lot, or if you are looking at what they happen to be wearing, for example, maybe you happen to notice that I'm wearing jeans, although I'm short and you can't really see that very well. But if you happen to notice that and you're like, dude, she has a PhD, she's doing like professional videos, how can she be wearing jeans? I can wear kind of whatever I want. I'm in my basement studio. But if you were focused on what I'm wearing instead of what I'm saying, this could be a cause of poor listening. We also have this problem called spare brain time. Now, spare brain time is the difference between the rate at which people talk and the rate at which your brain can process language. So, I'm not going to cite an exact textbook here, but I believe your brain can comprehend words at like 500 words a minute and the fastest, a minute, is that? Yeah. And then the fastest people can talk is like 150. That seems like a lot. And I talk really fast and I'm an auctioneer, but... Ugh. we have all this time to think about all this other stuff, so it's hard to focus on listening. That's why we have to do our best to be ethical listeners. How do we become a more ethical or a better listener? We want to take listening seriously. So if it's something that we really need to do to pay attention, we have to take it seriously. We want to be an active participant. Not only do we want to just absorb the information, but we want to take notes, clarify, ask questions, be an active participant, try to resist distractions. Now, when my ex-husband was deployed to Iraq, I was not being a very good listener. He was talking to me via video chat. I was texting or instant messaging with my dad. I was listening to the TV. I was typing an email. I was doing, oh, and I was cooking supper. I was doing like five different things. Do you think I was actually paying attention to any of the things? Not really, because there was way too much going on. Even with spare brain time, I wasn't able to pay attention to all of it. Don't or try not to be diverted by appearance and delivery. These are things we'll cover in later chapters, but you definitely want to focus more on the message and not on what the speaker looks like or what they happen to be wearing. If they say um and and a lot, if they stutter a lot, try to focus definitely on the message that's being sent. Try to suspend your judgment, especially if you're listening to a speaker that you may not exactly agree with. Try to suspend the judgment that you've passed on to on this person and listen to the arguments that he or she is making. You want to develop note taking skills. I've mentioned this a couple of times. So not only should we learn how to take notes in our classes in college or in a meeting with our bosses, but we can also learn to take mental notes when we're listening to a speaker, when we're listening to our friend in conversation, we can take mental notes. This way we can provide feedback and be effective. We can say things like, okay, so what you said is we need to do this step first, then we can do this step, 
and then we can do this step. What you said is we need to go to the store, we need to get an oil change in the truck, and we need to also take the dog to the vet. We need to have those step-by-step -step processes. And then the last one is to focus your listening, not focusing too hard, but pay attention, step up your game, and work on being a better listener. Focused listening includes listening for the main points. This is that note-taking piece. Listening for evidence. Did they provide evidence for the arguments that they're making? And then listen for technique. What is the message that they're trying to get across? What is the technique that they are using? Listening is a skill that we use most of the time in conversation, most of the time in classrooms, most of the time in business meetings. We, we are called upon to listen, but we didn't learn how to listen. Nobody taught us how to listen. Most people were just told, listen. So when you got to elementary school, you were told, listen, would you just listen? Or your parents said even before that, or the adults in your lives, would you just listen? Okay, how do you do that? How do you listen? I mean, hearing usually comes along with your body unless you have a disability of some sort. But actually listening, how do we do that? Who taught us that? Has anybody ever been around children? And the, you're, say you're making macaroni and cheese, so you're in the kitchen making mac and cheese, and the little kid comes running in and they're like, oh my gosh, I gotta tell you, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, 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 wait, I'm busy. I'm making supper here. I don't have time. Let me, let me get back to you before this water boils over or before these noodles stick to the pot. So the kid goes away with their exciting news and you didn't pay attention. A few minutes later, when the macaroni and cheese is done, you go to find the kid. They're sitting in the middle of the floor playing with whatever toy that is really important to them. And you're like, okay, come on, it's supper time. Come and do whatever it is that I've asked you to. Come wash your hands, come eat, both, <laughs> whatever. And then the kid is like, no, 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 wait, hold on just a second. I'll be right there. I'm doing something important. Where did they learn how to listen? From the adults in their lives. So how do we fix that? Can we move the pot off of the burner? And we can crouch down next to the kid and say, okay, you have my attention. Or you can say, I know that this is really important to you. I'm going to listen to you, but I can't right now. So give me just a minute and I'll come find you. Then when you go to find the child, listen to what he or she has to say. That's super important before launching into a request. This will be our way of teaching the next generation how to listen just a little bit better.